Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. Magic Gathering, comma, the. It's the OG of card games. It's existed since... Well, four times. Its latest set, Kaldheim. Called, called to him. What about the Vikings is about to release. As you can clearly tell, I'm not very excited about this one. I've never really been into Vikings and the whole aesthetic. To me, Vikings are really just lamer pirates, honestly. I'm way more excited for upcoming sets like Modern Horizons 2 or the Dungeons & Dragons one, but this one... meh. And to be fair, I haven't seen any of the cards yet. I'm waiting to do this video before we actually take a look at them. And who knows, there might be some ones in here that make me change my mind. I might get super hyped for this. If not, well, this is why we buy singles. I'm also not going to be going over every single card in this 200 plus card set. That would take forever. I'm not here either to do deck techs or strategies for these cards at all. I'm not about that. If you want to do that, then there's plenty of other magic content creators out there that can give you just that. Honestly, I'm here to just see what kind of goblins they got and to build bad, janky decks that do one cool thing very well and then lose. That's, that's how I play every card game. And hey, even if you're not into magic, you don't really understand it, stick around because half the fun of the game is just looking at the beautiful artwork and reading the weird flavor text. So let's dig in, shall we? Let's dig in, shall we? What the f Hey, this one also has caught my eye here. We got Resplendent Marshall. It's uh, one white white for a 3 3 Angel Warrior. It's got flying force, and when it enters the battlefield or dies, you can exile another creature card from your graveyard. When you do, you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control other than Resplendent Marshall that shares a creature type with the exiled card. So obviously that's going to go in a lot of tribal decks, I think just in general, even if you're not doing angels or warriors, like specific, I mean it doesn't target itself, so why not, right? That's, that's a very interesting effect, because I can see that going in like maybe a self-mill deck or something like that, maybe just a mill deck in general, because you'd obviously benefit the most from that. Or definitely like even in a deck with white that you play a lot of creatures, so you know they're going to be in the graveyard. Maybe you swing a lot. Playing Boros, probably. You've got a lot of creatures that share a type, like Warrior or Goblin or something like that. Yeah, that one I can actually think of doing some stuff with it. It would definitely have to do some, like, blink effects with it, because it's when it enters the battlefield, it dies. So something that maybe basically leave the battlefield, make it come back, all that stuff. But that's easy to do here with, like, blue. Even white's got a lot of that, so that's not too hard. Yeah, that one's, that one's pretty good. That one... I'm starting to get, you know, the, the cogs in my head are starting to turn now. I'm like, all right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Oh, okay, I actually didn't know this. There are returning snow mechanics. That's interesting. It's got snow sorceries, search for glory, two and a white. <laughs> I'm noticing a pattern here with these white cards. Uh, search your library for a snow permanent card, a legendary card, or a saga card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, and shuffle your library. You gain one life for each uh, snow color mana spent to cast this spell. Uh, that's pretty dope. It's a three mana tutor that lets you get uh, any legendary card, any saga, any permanent. Uh, that's that's pretty freaking crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Like yeah, that's just a, that's just a good card. I don't have much to say about that. Oh no, it already sucks. <laughs> Arlen's Epiphany Five Blue Blue. Create two one one blue bird creature tokens with flying, and take an extra turn. Oh my god, you brought back extra turn cards again. <sighs> god damn it. Like, and, and what's the point of the two one one birds? That's just like, it just seems like an extra like middle finger to the person it's being done against. Like, oh yeah, I'm taking extra turn. Also, I made two bird creature tokens. What's the point of that? You also got foretell, so you can technically play it if your mana screwed. I mean, it's only like one mana less, but still, that's not bad, honestly. Play. Playing any spell for cheaper is going to be good in the long run, I feel. Especially an extra turn spell, like, why would you not do that? Ugh, god damn it. Wizards. You really brought it back, didn't you? Here we got Cosmos Charger. It's three and a blue. It's three, three, horse spirit creature. It's got flash and flying. Okay, seems pretty alright so far. But, foretelling cards from your hand cost one less and can be done on any player's turn. Just why? Especially after reading that extra turn card, why? So not only are we going to make that extra turn card cheaper, and now it's Flash. Fuck. <laughs> what was this big boy? Uh, Jesus Christ, 10 blue blue, 12 mana for an 8 Kraken. Spell costs 
One less to cast for each snow land you control. Okay. So that's not good. Uh, when a speaker crack enters the battlefield, artifacts and creatures target opponent controls. Don't untap your enough players. Next untap step. Okay. And you can return three snow land you control to their owner's hand. Return this to its owner's hand. What? What if I for battlefield? This one is kind of fucking nuts. What the hell? Draw your necromancer, three and a black. It's a 4-4 four, four, snow creature zombie cleric. If a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile that card with an ice counter on it instead. You may cast spells from among cards and exile your opponent's own with ice counters on them. And you may spend mana from snow sources as though they were made of any color to cast those spells. That's fucking amazing. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Especially in black, you're killing creatures left and right probably with board white. We just looked at a board white too. Like, oh my god, that's so good. I wish this was a legendary creature. I would totally make a commander out of this. That just seems like a, a great, that's just amazing. Oh my god. Because not only do they lose access to it, you, 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 what? That's just dope. I want this one. This is the first card where I'm like, oh my god, I want this. Like, I don't even know what I'm going to use it for, but I want it. Because that's just a fucking amazing effect. Actually, it's probably, isn't that better that's not a legendary creature? Because then you just run four of them in a deck, honestly. Have all four of them out. What would happen if there's, well, I guess they just all get like four ice counters or whatever. I guess it's not that great, but you'd have more. Like, you know, if they got rid of it, then it's like, oh, well, you just drew another one. Suck it. This one just seems like a good card in general as well. Eradicator of Valkyrie. Uh, it's two, black, black, angel berserker, four, three. It's got flying, lifelink, and hexproof from planeswalkers, all great abilities. And then it's got boast for one in the black, two sacrifice creature. And each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. That's just amazing. So basically you attack with it, you pay, you pay its boast cost, you sacrifice a creature, which you're playing black, you're probably playing some form of aristocrats. And they, you get rid of a problem that's over there. Even if they got a little stuff, you know, you whittle it down, you probably pay it more. Um, can you pay a boast cost uh, more than once? Oh, no, only once each turn, God damn it. Possible mono black commander here. We got Fargoth, Blood Sky Sire. Dude looks fucking sick. It's two in a black. It's a two, three legendary creature, Demon Rogue. It's got Death Touch and its boast cost is one in a black. And target player searches their library for a card, and then shuffles their library and puts that card on top of it. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry? What? So you just, what? Um, uh, we got Mono Red, and it's, uh, who doesn't love Mono Red, except the people that don't play it? Oh, right off the bat, we get a card that could be a possible commander for Mono Red. So we got Arnie, Broken Brow, two red, it's three, three. Legendary creature, human berserker. It's got haste, very red already, and it's got boast for just one generic mana. You may change Arnie Broken Brow's uh, base power to one plus the greatest power among other creatures you control until end of turn. That's pretty cool. I like that. I headbutted a troll and one. <laughs> oh, here we got another big dude. Big dude. Big dude. Uh, Quakebringer, three red red, or five four giant berserker creature. First off, your opponents can't gain life, so good in general. At the beginning of your upkeep, Quake Burner deals two damage to each opponent. What? At the beginning of your upkeep, it deals. Yeah, wow, really? This ability triggers only if Quake Burner is on the battlefield, or if Quake Burner is in your graveyard and you control a giant? What? <laughs> so it doesn't even have to be in the fucking battlefield? That's crazy. Alright, I don't need to read this again. At the beginning of your upkeep, Quake Burner deals two damage to each opponent. This ability triggers only if Quake Burner is on the battlefield. Or if it's <laughs> that's pretty dope. So if you're playing tri giant tribal, which it seems to be the set it's pretty about, like you can just do that. If you're playing against a mill deck and you're doing giant tribal, that's just yeah, it's just another great card. Holy shit. Like the hanging life and you deal two damage every turn automatically. That's just dope. And it's got foretell, so it's not just another a little extra added how good it is, basically. That's pretty dope. That's an amazing card. I want that one, definitely. All right, if my camera angle looks slightly different, it's because I'm recording this on my iPhone and the storage is full because I got too many pictures of anime boobs on there, but it's all fine, we're all good. Let's continue, I want a great place to continue because I guess with this set, uh, vehicles are back, which is great because I freaking loved vehicles. No one wants to give them a chance, but I think they can be really good. Uh, I haven't made them good yet, but I'm, I'm doing my best. Maybe this set will help me out. And we got our first one here. Obviously, we're not in artifacts yet, so we'll probably see way more there. 
but we got a green one. Um, Esca's, Esca's Chariot, uh, three to green, legendary artifact vehicle, it's a 4-4, four, four. and when Esca's Chariot enters the battlefield, you create two 2-2 two, two green cat creature tokens, dope. And whenever Esco's Cherry attacks, create a token that's a copy of target token you control. That's pretty good. Like, you just make copies of tokens, tokens on copies, and all that stuff. God, I wish vehicles could be commanders. <laughs> Alright, we got our first uh, green commander, possibly. Finn the Fang Bear. It's one in a green. It's Slitting your Creature Human Warrior 1 3. It's got Death Touch, interestingly. And whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets two poison count. Oh no, poison counters are back. Oh god. Oh no. Oh shit. We got we got a, another possible commander, Toski Bearer of Secrets. It's three and a green for a squirrel legendary creature. I don't know if there's been any other legendary squirrels, none that I've heard of anyway. Uh, so it's already great. It's a one one. It can't be countered, and it's indestructible. Awesome. And when it attacks each com oh, it attacks each combat table, and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. That's just <laughs> oh my god! Again, this is just a card I freaking love. Like, what's this is so stupid? I love it. It's a one-one tax every time. Can't be killed. Can't be countered. And you draw cards from. It. That's just a good card. Holy shit! This one's pretty cool. This is a cool Rakdos commander, I think. Uh, Carter Doom Scourge two uh, black red. It's a legendary creature, Demon Berserker, 4-3. And when it enters the battlefield, until your next turn, creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able and attack a player other than you if able. And whenever an attacking creature dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. That's really sick. That's actually a cool Rakdos commander because second ability, like that, this is that affects everyone, I guess it seems, because they're in the first one. Like if you're playing Rakdos, you're probably like attacking left and right, sacrificing things, even when they're attacking. Because um, it says when an attacking creature dies, so like you can like, you know, trigger the attack, and then like after, I guess have your blocks are declared or whatever that step happens, you can like sacrifice them to something. But, like they don't have to die to combat, it seems like, because it doesn't say if a creature dies during combat, it says if an attacking creature dies. So you can do some stuff with that. And the fact that when it enters the battlefield, so if you're constantly recasting it, like say from your command zone or something like that, uh, you could kind of wipe the board in some way, I assume, because it's like until your next turn, like say you have enough mana, you can do something with that. That's really cool. This is a, ooh, this is interesting. I like this card. This is probably the first one now where I'm like, oh man, I'm getting like a deck list in my head already about this. This is what I love. This is the kind of cards I want to see. Oh fuck yeah, dude. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You want you want to know why? Fucking vehicles are so sick. Colossal plow. It's a fucking plow. Two man artifact vehicle. I don't even give a shit what it does because it's a fucking plow. It's gonna, I'm gonna fucking plow your fields with this card. What does it even do? When it attacks, you add three white mana and you gain three life until end of turn you don't lose this mana steps. Holy shit. So not only is it a vehicle, it ramps you in white. Are you kidding me? This card is the best card of all time. Shut the fuck up. Everyone play this card. It's great. Plow your enemies. So all in all, this sets... Again, I'm not super excited for it like I thought it would be. Uh, I mean, like, I didn't hype me up as much as I thought it would, but it's definitely a, an interesting one. Like, please print more Colossal Plow. I beg you. I, I have no other joy besides that.